And welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today we have another Star Wars Galaxy of Heroes video for you. Specifically, we're going to be looking at a new series of videos entitled Hero or Zero. We're going to be doing some sight reading sessions on some new characters. Specifically, we're looking at the Conquest character, Admiral Trench. And we're going to be doing a little bit of speculating as we look at his kit to decide whether he is going to be a hero or a zero in the near future. Let's go ahead and get into it, folks. All right, so first and foremost, we're gonna go ahead and take an overall look at his kit and see what they've got for us here. So it says that he's dark side, he's a leader, he is a support character, and he's a separatist. Highlights, he's a tactical separatist leader with deep tech and extortion synergy. So immediately we know that tech, that is referencing um, not tech as in the Bad Batch character, but instead that is referencing Wat Tambor and the tech that he gives out to different characters. Also, Extortion, as we are well aware, is a Newt Gunray uh, specific ability, and that is obviously going to be pairing very well with Admiral Trench here. Outwits and Outspeeds foes with buff and debuff mechanics, and also Omicrons in Territory War. So he is a Territory War centric character. Now, immediately everyone's probably like, well, I might as well just stop watching this video because we know he's a zero, but not so fast, my friends. CG knows that they have a really, really bad history with TW Omicrons and Conquest characters in particular that have TW Omicrons. And of course, I am referring to Scion of Django, if you guys don't know that. Scion of Django is one of the absolute worst characters that has ever come out in this game. Um, especially for the amount of investment that you have to put into them and what you get in return for that. Now, most everyone's going to jump and say, well, this is another sign of Django. Here's the thing, folks. CG knows what's going on. They are very well aware of what is happening in the game and the feedback from the community. They may ignore that feedback a lot of times, which they absolutely do, but that doesn't mean they're not aware of it. And this is an instance where... It would not surprise me if they go and lean totally on the opposite end of the spectrum. They know the sign of Django was a total dud. They know that he was a total waste of a character and people have a really, really bad taste in their mouth right now in regards to territory war Omicron characters from conquest. Don't be shocked if this is designed to flip that narrative and suddenly make us like territory war Omicron characters again. <laughs> With that being said, the synergy suggestions that they have here are Watt, Count Dooku, Django, Newt, and Asajj. These are some interesting suggestions. Newt was pretty obvious. Watt was pretty obvious. Dooku makes a lot of sense because Dooku really doesn't have a great home with the Sith. He's really better as a separatist. Django is interesting. Django fits very well on both a Bounty Hunter team as well as a Mandalorian team, specifically a Mollalorian team. So it's a little hard to give him up, but might work well. We shall see. Asajj is another interesting one. If you take her away from the Night Sister team, that Night Sister team is really completely useless at this point. As it is, they're really struggling to keep up. So this makes me wonder if you're really getting Asajj completely pulled away. Are we going to see another Night Sister down the road? Marin Trench, perhaps? Could be interesting. Let's go ahead and get into the kit, folks, and see if they can give us any more details about what we might be thinking about here in the future. So it says key attributes Separatist leader who has direct synergy with New Gunray's extortion ability and Watt, Tom, uh, Watt Tambor's tech abilities, which we mentioned earlier. Manipulates the flow of battle with an array of helpful buffs for his allies and yeah, debilitating, debilitating debuffs for his foes. And here's the key thing that we didn't mention before. Works best alongside non-droid and non-Geonosian separatist allies. So in other words, you can forget using any of your Grievous team or putting him with your Grievous team. You can forget about putting him with Geos or pairing Geos with him. They're not going to work very well. Are they functional? Perhaps. You might have a niche kind of situation where they could work. 
but generally speaking, they're not going to be designed to fit well with this character. For those of you who don't know, Trench was a uh, Separatist Admiral. Uh, he was ruthless and very strategic. Uh, very, very famous in the Clone Wars. I am a huge fan of him. I am very familiar with the Clone Wars. One of, some of my favorite stuff came from the Clone Wars. So I personally am really excited that he is coming to the game. Should be awesome. Um, Strench, or Trench has strong ties with other Separatist leaders, uh, particularly Wat Tambor, and that's reflected through his kit, which makes sense. Strategy tips. This is interesting. Django Fett greatly benefits from having the Bactoid Shield Generator tech while under an Admiral Trench-led team. So for those of you who don't know, that's the tank tech. Opening with this can give you your team the starting advantage. It's interesting they say opening with this. Because remember, at the opening of battle, Django has damage immunity. Might be a key thing with that. We'll get into that further down the road. Because the team will gain a great deal of speed based on extortion from Newt Gunray and tech from Wat Tambor, both of those characters can benefit from higher speed values to set yourself up for success. So in other words, folks, you want to load up Watt and Newt with just all the speed that you possibly can. It makes me wonder if perhaps Django is going to be the opposite. All right. Tech we've already referred to because that's not tech as in the Bad Batch. Abilities, basic, unfinished business. This is an Omicron. This is interesting. We have not, in fact, I think they referenced it up here earlier. Yes, is this the first Omicron on a basic ability? Indeed it is. This is the first time that we have seen an Omicron on a basic here. Final text, deal special damage to target enemy and shock them for two turns. If the target was already shocked, stun them for one turn. That's pretty good. To have a stun on basic is very, very, very good. During Trench's turn, allies with tactical supremacy, I believe that's a new ability, we'll see, Gain a heal over time and a protection over time, 10% for two turns. Interesting. Heal over time and protection over time. So a lot of buffs. Keep that in mind. While in Territory Wars, during Trench's turn, inflict ability block on target enemy for one turn, which can't be dispelled or resisted. Oh. And reduce their critical damage by 20% stacking until the end of the encounter. If target enemy was already debuffed, which more than likely they're going to be based on the team comp that we're looking at up here, remove 50% turn meter from them. Holy cow. Non-droid separatist allies recover 30% health and protection. Holy smokes. That's on a basic, folks. On a basic, you're gaining 30% health and protection. That is massive. Massive. Tons of regen. It's going to be a thick team, very difficult to kill. The removing 50% turn meter is also impressive. What I'm interested to see here is, are there going to be a lot of calls to assist? If there are a lot of calls to assist, then this ability is going to be very, very, very good. Net positive, special number one. This is a Zeta, cooldown of three. It's a relatively short cooldown. Dispel buffs, deal special damage to target enemy. It was the first one physical, special. So he's all special. Okay. Inflict Stagger for two turns and call all other non-droid Separatist allies to assist. So there is our first call to assist. Now, that's not a major issue since it's not him using his basic there. But it is good for the rest of the team. Non-droid Separatist allies gain Tactical Supremacy for two turns, which can't be copied. Tr uh, Trench gains Protection up 40% for two turns, and other Separatist allies gain Protection up 20% for two turns. Tactical Supremacy, yes, here we go. So this is a new ability, effect, whatever. Plus 30% critical damage and potency. 10% protection at the start of turn. Uh, recover, sorry. If dispelled, recover 40% health. Then gain advantage and foresight for two turns at the end of that turn. Interesting. That doesn't seem like that is that insanely good. Uh, lots of regen in terms of the protection and the health. And I guess it does give you foresight as well. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good now that I think more about it. Interesting. Leadership. Now, I would imagine this is going to be the big one because you're going to want him as the lead versus, for instance, uh, Newt or um, probably your next best one would be Count Dooku. I would think of this group. So I imagine he's going to be bringing in really a top tier leadership. It's interesting he only has one special, by the way, folks. Feared Tactician. 
This is a Zeta as well as an Omicron. Final tech, Separatist allies have plus 30% max health, max protection, and potency, and they have plus 10%, holy cow, plus 10% speed. That's a lot. Oh, oh, there's more. <laughs> there's more for each ally with tech and each enemy with extortion. Oh my word, I thought it was just 10% period. It's 10% for each ally with tech. So yeah, you are definitely going to want an extremely fast watt then. The faster your watt is, the faster you can get that out. Now here's the cool thing, folks. Watt gets a bonus turn at the very beginning. Minus Han, he will always go first. Um, which means your team is going to get at least a bonus of 10% speed. Now you figure if your team is at uh, around, you know, 275 to 300 is probably a very, very doable number. You're gaining between 27 to 30 speed on top of that. So you're now with a 300 speed character, you're now at 330 speed right off the bat. Right off the bat. As tech keeps going and keeps putting more of, or yeah, tech, as <laughs> Watt keeps putting more of his techs on, you gain more of that. So another 30 speed, suddenly you're 360. If you get extortion on somebody, suddenly you're at 390. Very quickly in this battle, folks, you're at plus 400 speed. That's nuts. That is nuts. Whenever a separatist ally inflicts a debuff on an enemy, they gain 20% offense. Wow. For three turns, stacking limit once per turn. Oh, okay. So that's at least limited a little bit. It's capped a little bit. While a Separatist ally has a tech, they have plus 100% potency. So there's going to be a lot of debuffs flying around. When a non-Geonosian Separatist ally gains Bactoid Shield Generator tech, they dispel stealth from themselves. And while they have Bactoid Shield Generator tech, they are immune to stealth. Interesting. And gain 100% crit avoidance and defense. Now... We mentioned before, Watt, you're going to want to have very, very fast. Newt, you're going to have very, very fast. I'm assuming you're going to, based on what this wording is here, want Dooku to be very, very fast as well. Probably the fastest next to, to Watt would be my guess. Because what's going to happen is Watt is going to come out, put the tank tech on Django, Dooku is then going to put everybody under stealth. Django will not go under stealth because he has the tank tech. Django has damage immunity. You will not be able to kill him, but you will be forced to attack him. If you mod him to be very slow, you're going to be stuck behind him and not be able to kill the rest of this team unless you have a crazy amount of AoEs. Well, meanwhile, the rest of your team is just going to be putting more and more tech and extortion on the opposing team and gaining more and more and more speed. And sure enough, I am I am imagining here, folks, that by the time Django is finally outside of damage immunity, the match is going to be over because they're going to be at 400 plus speed and you're still going to be looking at like 250 to 300. You're going to be done. That is impressive. Very impressive. While a Separatist ally has a heal over time, they have plus 30% uh, counter chance. That's pretty good. And while they have protection over time, they have plus 30% defense pen. That's very good. While an enemy has burning... Oh, man. So that's another Django ability. They can't assist, counterattack, or gain bonus turn meter. Hmm... Now this makes me wonder, do we want Jenga to be fast? Because if you want if you get him out and running, you shut down their turn meter gains. Interesting. I'm not sure how I how how I feel about that one at the moment. While in terror, that's all regular, guys. That's the amazing part. All of that, not territory war. While in territory wars, non-droid separatist allies have plus 50% mastery. 75% max health and max protection. So they're going to be very thick. Separatist allies with tech can't have their turn meter reduced. That's very big. 
I could see a CLS team working on this outside of TW. Inside of TW, I could see this going bad. Enemies with extortion will be critically hit if able. I almost guarantee you this, this is designed that this team is weak to CLS in non-TW modes. But in TW, CLS will not be able to do very much here. Especially as they gain speed and once they get that burning out they're not able to counter anymore they're not able to gain any turn meter that'll shut down cls teams uh whenever an enemy dispels a debuff interesting separatist allies gain 10 percent turn meter limit once per turn hmm the first time each enemy is reduced below 100% health, excluding summons, Separatist allies gain 20% offense stacking and... Oh, wait, there's more. There's more speed. <laughs> and plus five speed stacking until the end of the battle. So that's another 25. Yeah, another 25 speed on top of that. Folks, you're looking at like 450 speed by the time you're at the end of the battle. And that's if you are just moderately fast. Moderately fast. We're not even talking about elite level fast right now. That is crazy. That And that, again, by the way, is TW, guys. Um, yeah, it sounds to me like this team is going to be, you know, vulnerable to a lot of turn meter manipulating teams outside of TW. But inside of TW, it sounds like turn meter manipulating teams are not going to work very well. Unique one. I smell fear and it smells good. <laughs> That's a great quote. At the start of battle, Admiral Trench loses 50% max health, gains that much max protection. Interesting. So you want to mod him for health? Question mark. Hmm. While Trench is active, Separatist allies have plus 50% potency at the start of his turn. He gains a protection over time for two turns. While Trench has protection up, he is immune to buff immunity and healing immunity. That's pretty good. First time each enemy loses all protection. At the end of that turn, they are feared for one turn, which can't be dispelled, evaded, or resisted. So that's our first instance of fear, I believe, being present outside of the Sith. Interesting. Whenever another non-droid Separatist ally is damaged by an attack, defeated or evades... Trench has a 50%... Holy cow. Trench has a 50% chance to gain 100% turn meter. Limit once per turn. That's massive, folks. That is massive. So we mentioned earlier about how turn meter reduction teams like CLS might be able to beat this team outside of TW at this point. It sounds like they will not be able to in TW. Trooper teams would have had a chance against this as well. Until now, because as soon as somebody evades, because remember, foresight is part of the kit here. As soon as somebody evades, um, <laughs> is damaged by an attack or defeated. That's crazy. It's possible for Trench to gain 100% turn meter. You're not going to be able to come out and turn meter train this team, folks. It's not going to be able to happen. You're going to have to face the mono -y mono with speed, and they're going to outspeed you. This is going to be a really good team, in my opinion. And again, that's not in TW. That's in all game modes. Um, whenever an enemy dispels protection up from Trench, they are inflicted with shock for two turns, which can't be evaded or resisted. And remember, that pairs well with his basic. Very, very important thing there. While in TW, whenever an enemy resists a debuff from a Separatist ally... They lose 10% tenacity stacking. 10% critical damage stacking for three turns. The first time Trench's health is reduced below 75%, he recovers 100% health, gains foresight, protection up, tenacity up for two turns. Jeez, oh man. While a Separatist ally has a heal over time, health recovery on them is increased by 15%. While a Separatist ally has a protection over time, protection recovery on them is increased by 15%. That explains the heal over time and the protection over time. That makes a lot more sense. Allies with tactical... Oh my gosh. There's more. <laughs> now, I'm assuming this is in TW only. 
Allies with tactical supremacy have another 25 speed. So they're easily, easily at 450 speed, folks. Easily. In TW. That's crazy. Uh, tactical supremacy we saw earlier. His relic is a swagger stick. That's, <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> okay. So that's kind of our sight reading session. Now we're going to talk real quick about hero or zero. We mentioned that earlier. Theme of the video is, is he a hero or a zero? Folks, in my opinion, it's pretty straightforward. Correct answer is, he's going to be a hero, folks. He is absolutely, in my opinion, going to be a hero in TW. He sounds amazing in TW. But he sounds unlike Sign of Django, who is good in TW and terrible everywhere else. His kit design sounds like it's going to be really good across the board. He will be weak to certain teams. Uh, troopers, I think he'll be weak to. CLS, basically any turn meter driven teams, it sounds like they will be susceptible to losing to them. You will have to be careful with a CLS team, though, because of Django and his damage immunity, as we all know, is a, is a typical thing you got to be careful of. But it sounds like those teams are really going to struggle with this now. Um, my question is, and this is what might keep him from being a hero, can we afford the team that it takes to make him good? Can we afford to give up Asajj and have a zero Night Sister team, essentially? Can we afford to give up Django and potentially not have a Mololorian team? Can we afford to give up Watt Tambor from C and now no longer have a C team that can beat a lot of the GLs out there? That's a tall task, folks. That's a lot to ask to give up to make this team as good as it can be. I, I think the hero is accurate to the character. I think he is a hero. I don't think he's a zero. But the characters that are required to make him a hero, that's the zero. It's just, it's a big, it's a tall ask, folks. Unless they come out with, you know, a lifter unit for C in the near future and a, you know, a Marin Trench release for the Night Sisters. Um, I just don't see this team being worth losing all of those other comps. Uh, that's the only downside I see to this right now, everybody. Um, you know, maybe it's not as big of an issue because those teams aren't as good anymore in, in TW. And in TW, it's, it is easier to give those teams up. I, I don't know. Uh, me personally, I think C needs the lifter unit first and foremost. If C gets the lifter unit, then I think at least in TW, this is going to be a hero team as well as a hero character. Uh, but it, until we get some more characters that we can fill in with those other comps, I think this is really going to be fairly limited. It's just going to kind of be good in TW only and maybe a serviceable B team in other modes. Um, it's going to be like an like an Aiden team in TW, essentially, in other modes. Aiden in GAC is great, and I think this team in TW is going to be great. But outside of TW, an item team is not near the same. It's okay. It's serviceable. And it uses characters that were not really being used elsewhere. Kind of like Count Dooku here. Kind of like Newt to some degree. But it's a lot to ask, folks. It's a, it's a heavy, it's a steep price. It's a heavy price to pay. Let me know in the comments, folks. What do you think? Do you think Trench is going to be a hero? Do you think Trench is going to be a zero? Are you going for him in Conquest or are you not? I'm going to try to get him. We'll see. Like I said, I think he has the potential to be a hero. Just the asking price is really high. We'll see. If you liked what you saw today, folks, appreciate it if you guys gave me a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe. Excuse me. Turn on notifications if you'd like to catch other content in the future. Last but not least, join us over on Discord and Twitch for our live GAC matches. You can find those links down below in the video description. All right, everybody. Catch you next time.